So that's what we're here for. We're looking for some sunshine. And here we are. I believe we are in episode four of this really fun series, which is all about our journey, our journey to the summer solstice on June 20th, the brightest day of the year, a day where I hope that we're continuing to move in a great direction as far as the pandemic resolution of some kind. Um, Vaccines are out, but our goal is to work with everyone in our community to help you be the strongest and happiest and most flexible and well-rested that person that you can be by the summer solstice. And today I am joined by Dr. Danielle Parent. It is great to have you here, Danielle. And um, here we are to discuss extra tips, what you've been doing, and how we can help people in our community get to be the best person that they possibly can be. We're getting an extra two minutes of sunshine a day. And as I look outside today compared to last week, it's actually nice to see some sunshine. Um, There's still a little snow out there, but we don't mind that. It's nice that we're getting some longer days. So as people are joining on, this is a live presentation, a live stream, and it's here for you out in the community. So please, please, if you are here, tell us who you are. Tell us where you are. And more importantly, let us know if you've had any questions. Because Danielle is super smart and she wants to take your questions. And um, I'm sure you want to hear from her rather than always hearing from me. So we want to hear what your questions are. What questions do you have about exercise, nutrition, sleep, back pain, knee injuries, whatever it is, ask the questions and we are here to help you. Um, Finally, you can follow us on all those different social media platforms that you saw at the bottom. And, And the last thing, the most important thing is you can win a prize. If you comment, if you tell us you're here, if you sign up on our performanceptricom live section, you will go into our drawing. Um, this week, we are giving away a day trip lunchbox, which I think is really great for all the people who are going for walks and hikes during the day and want to take snacks, just not for themselves, but also for their kids, as well as a fleece line PPT hat we still need those hats to keep us warm. So we'll do that drawing uh, later in today's show. But let's jump over to you, Danielle, and say welcome. And my first question is, welcome and tell us a little bit about the year that you've just had. How? Tell us about the highlights of your, your year, maybe one a highlight in particular. And then tell us some of the strategies or some of the things that you've done to be able to manage your health during the year. Well, thank you so much for having me, Michelle. Um, Obviously, my biggest highlight is the new baby, but I can't believe we'll be one in May. So she has absolutely made the pandemic brighter than it it could have been. (laughs) And a a lot uh, more interesting. (laughs) I certainly do feel for it. There's a lot of new mothers out there um, in our communities. And I certainly can't imagine what it's like to not only deliver a baby, but deal with a newborn um, during a pandemic. So I'm sure that's come with many challenges, but it's really nice that you're not going to look back at the years of pandemic and what a terrible year. You're going to look and be like, I became a mama and I have a baby. So that's really exciting. It absolutely can change the perspective on a lot of things. Sure. Uh, but with both the pandemic and being a new mom, obviously there's been changes to like my normal routine and trying to stay healthy. So cooking has not changed. We eat, luckily we eat a lot of fresh fruit and you don't have to cook that. (laughs) So that's always good. But exercise has changed a ton. So normally my husband and I would go to the gym after work, we'd meet up and it was almost like a date before we'd go home, nice way to unwind. That's what we would do on a Saturday morning. And then we'd start our day or we'd go out, go away for the weekend. So we haven't done any of that. So we signed up for online <laughs> online classes. We've been doing, um, we used two different apps. We were using the Beachbody app and the Fit On app. So I could have some, uh, more of a routine with Pilates, bar, yoga. I went a lot lower impact than I normally would have done. Uh, 
after having the baby, which was just a change where I didn't have to think. I could have made myself a program, but it's so nice to not have to think about what you're going to do every day. Um, and then my husband was running on a treadmill, so at least it's not snowing every single day. <laughs> he can go outside. So let's talk a little bit about the online platforms. They're certainly new, and when the pandemic first hit, there was questions, are people going to use them, are they not? And I think we all, like you said, there's something nice about having the routine and someone saying, here, do this now, and not having to think about it. Um, what do you think the role will be on the virtual um, exercise programs, even once this pandemic's over? Do you think it's something that people will stick with? I do. I think people have found a way to have consistency, but also conveniently. Mm -hmm. And I think the convenience factor is something that is people are drawn to mm -hmm. where if things are just easier, then yeah, you're going to be more apt to do it. It's not setting aside this time to get ready and drive and then go to the gym and then drive home where you might need two hours of time, depending on where you were going. And now you're like, oh, 45 minutes. 20 minutes if that's all you had for that day yeah. and you can jump in jump out it's not embarrassing to like leave a class if you had to skip out early so I think it's the convenience factor is here to stay well that's what I hope because I certainly hope it helps our communities continue to have more access to people to help support them in their um, access to guidance when it comes to exercise and it's been really nice to see so many of our local gyms actually have these hybrid hybrid models i mean i know core fitness providence pilates which are close to where i am um but in all the different communities you know i would recommend they all like let us know who's offering virtual as well as in person because it's a great access point, not just during a pandemic, but in the future as well. And we you know, often see patients in the clinic, but ultimately our goal is to help keep people moving and active. And they're often looking for the resources that fit their lifestyles. So I'm pleased that you've found a fit for you. So Pilates and bar, there's lots of people out there. I think in these days, most people know what Pilates is, but I'll ask you to give a, a quick little overview of it. And I'll ask you to give a little quick overview of bar because I still think there's a lot of people who are like, what is bar? Is this just ballerinas? So tell us about both Pilates and bar. Well, I'll start with bar because it's definitely not for ballerinas. <laughs> I can do it. Um, it is, it's a really nice low impact way to get your heart rate up and work on endurance and lengthening your muscles at the same time as strengthening them, mm -hmm. which in your day-to-day -day life, endurance is what your muscles are looking for when you're asking them to do a repetitive task. Like if you needed to stand for a good portion of the day, you're asking for those muscles to be working the whole time. So that endurance portion, it's not necessarily just about brute strength. I can lift a box. You have to have the endurance. So bar, I think, does a wonderful job of lengthening you, keeping that optimal range of the muscle function, and then giving you the strength and the endurance that you're looking for. Um, and there's no equipment or very light weights, which mm -hmm. makes it very convenient if you're doing a virtual class, especially mm -hmm. if you were staying at home and you already needed to do more but didn't have like a home gym set up and I know getting a home gym set up has been a struggle for some people because everyone was trying to do it and things were getting bought out so I have found that that's just a wonderful option and then Pilates I have done Pilates for a while uh, which I very much enjoy it is as hard as you want it to be which is you can kind of customize it. Even if you're going through the class, you can still customize each session to what you feel you need. There's at least the instructors that you're most likely going to work with. There's always a way to make things a little bit harder, a little bit easier. And they're giving you those cues where you can really focus on your breathing, keeping that posture the way you need it to be, focusing on the right muscles to activate. And you're just getting a nice full body training but again, a nice low impact version where if you're somebody who has a lot of joint pain or you had a little bit of instability, you can you can lean on something. You can sit on the floor and you don't have to worry about necessarily 
that balance portion the whole time, but balance is, is worked. It's sneaky. It gets worked right in there. So let's jump to two things. So I like you've talked about both bar and Pilates, which are both great forms of exercise. And often when we think of getting people to the healthiest they can be, it's not about just cardiovascular or just strength training or just flexibility or just getting enough sleep or thinking of nutrition. It encompasses a whole lot of things. And you touched on two key things that let's pinpoint on those. You talked um, a little bit about the positions we spend a lot of time in. So let's talk about things like standing, sitting, so posture it comes to mind, and obviously balance, which came up in the Pilates. Um, you know, I actually read in one of the things that you wrote to me about something about the daily fight against falls. And I picked up on that and thought that was a kind of a cool quote. Like we should, every day we are constantly fighting against falls. Now it's easy for you and I to say, because we're not in that age bracket that's more at risk of falls. Um, but um, we still, we still have to be careful of falls, especially on those icy days. So let's jump on, let's, let's start with, for, not just for prevention, let's talk about balance. Like, why is balance important? Why do you care about balance? Tell us a little bit more about balance and think about not just for the elderly person who may be a little more frail, let's also, also think about the college athlete who's trying to be the best that he can or she can on the field. Yeah, balance is so important. And uh, I've worked with athletes, I've worked with elderly, but I even worked with children and the clumsy child or the, yeah. the, the person that feels like I'm just prone to it. I'm always going to get hurt. I bump into things. That's usually a, a core and a balance deficit that we're trying to address. So when I say that it's a daily fight against falls, my other part of that is gravity always wins. <laughs> So if you don't have the balance to fight gravity, that's when you're going to fall. You need that quick reaction time. You need core strength. You need calf strength. You need back strength. It's not just that normal like, oh, yep, my core is nice and strong, so I must have good balance. It's a lot of other factors that you have to take into consideration. So are you a toe walker? Because a toe walker could be 15 years old, could be years old could be three years old but toe walkers they have those really tight calves it changes the center of gravity so your belly is pulled a little bit more forward so now your back is already already overactive so if you stumbled on a crack in the sidewalk no matter what age if you are already using those muscles you don't have that reaction time and strength for those muscles to activate to catch you from falling and you're more likely to fall. Yeah. We don't want to see our kids fall. We don't want to see our parents fall. And we certainly don't want to be on the ground. And I think you, you bring up a good point there because often when we think about preventing falls, we're thinking about the elderly, but really falls is a problem for every age. We're just more concerned for the elderly because they tend to have more significant injuries and don't recover as well and end up with hip fractures and other things like that. So, you know, I see, even I have friends or I see kids and they're like, oh, I fell. And I'm like, okay, you got away with it now. You're not gonna get away with it in the future. So you really gotta think about how do you incorporate optimizing your ability to balance at a young age and then use it or lose it, or you will lose it, and, and keep that as a, as a fundamental component of your well-being, just like walking is, and just like your ability to lift a box is. So we actually put out a question um, to say, do you practice balancing every day? And only 38% 30 of respondents, which actually is better than I thought it, thought it would be, um, said that they practiced it. And so 38% of people practice it every day. Danielle, do you have some tips for the people who are listening and say, I, I, I don't have time to take a Pilates class every day. Like what are some everyday tips that someone can do to know that they're constantly practicing and challenging their balance every day? They can be such little things. So if you have terrible balance, start slow. And when you're brushing your teeth, just try and lift one foot. If you're already supposed to be brushing your teeth, you're standing there on two feet, Try and just lift one. If it's five seconds, wonderful. If it's two minutes, great. 
try your other foot when you brush your, <laughs> brush your teeth at night too. <laughs> Um, or if you want to try standing one foot in front of the other when you're brushing your teeth, doing the dishes, so it's like you're on a tightrope. Those would be the more starting positions because then you're right in front of a counter or a sink where you'd have something stable to grab onto. You can easily put the other foot down or widen your stance. So you have a nice wide base to catch. But if you're feeling like you're fairly, like, no, I think I have decent balance, but I definitely don't work on it. Even something as simple as trying to put your socks on while standing up will force you to stand on one leg while bending forward, bringing one foot up onto the opposite thigh. If you're going to do like a figure four position um, or like a tree pose, if you were going to do yoga <laughs> or just bringing that knee up really high, which is going to get a little bit of that deep core activation and try not to hold your breath. Everyone holds their breath, but don't hold your breath. Breathe in and breathe out. And just exchanging that air is going to give you at least eight to 10 seconds, depending on how deep of a breath you're taking. I so. really like your comment about the breath hold because we so often see people, even when they're lifting something heavy, think, oh, I'll hold my breath. And yeah, what that does is it stabilizes your, uses your, it means you're using your diaphragm to stabilize your spine rather than using your abdominal muscles. And that puts strain on your back. That impacts your the biomechanics, your musculoskeletal system. So ensuring you're breathing, it doesn't make you less strong. What it does is it means that you use the correct muscles to balance with so that you're normalizing the way everything works. The other problem is when you hold your breath, you start to change the, the oxygen content, the CO2 cons, content in your blood. That affects the nutrition that's going to the muscles that are helping to hold you up. So all these things impact us. So, you know, there's there's obviously plenty of yogis out there who will be should be high-fiving Danielle and I at the moment. And there's many people out there that are like, yeah, just breathe. Like breath is so important. And I'll I'll do a segue and say, it's not about when people say, well, how do I breathe? Do When I lift something or when I stand, or should I be breathing out? Should I breathe in? And da, da, da. Here's my opinion, is that it doesn't matter. Just breathe. Just breathe. Just keep breathing. It's not, there isn't this magical, like, breathe in during this, move out during that. And we're talking more about balance things now. But any of the balance things, just keep breathing. And it's better for it's better for everything. So sorry to take that tangent, but I'm really pleased you brought up the breathing component, Danielle. It's a really good tangent, um, especially with while you're breathing, you're increasing that load transfer ability. So if you're in a single leg position, you're actually able to recruit that other side. So you're going to be more stable when you're breathing. Yep. And a lot of the people that I work with that are breath holders. I will just have them either hum when they're doing something. I like humming. Good. Yep. If someone else is in the room, strike up a conversation, tell them a random story, figure out how to make them laugh. You'll end up laughing. So I know you're breathing. Yeah. And while you're talking, you can't hold your breath. Great. So just little, little changes. Yeah. yeah. Look how outgoing and personable you are. <laughs> exactly. I love the hum. So for the person who's like going, well, you can't really hum and brush your teeth, but if you're putting on your socks and you're like, all right, I'm in a safe place to do this. I'm going to do it in one leg. I'm going to stand on one leg. I'm a little nervous, but just breathe, you know, and I mean, just hum, sing a song. <laughs> and humming is a really nice relaxation technique as it is. So you should be less nervous if you're going to try something new. Yeah. I like your points too. I think that that's a key point you see, because most people are going to say, I don't have time to blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to be I love the brush the teeth um, trick. That's actually something I do every morning. If you ever come into the bathroom and see me brushing my teeth, I will be standing on one leg. And because I like to be a little goofy, suddenly I'll be doing a tree pose or standing forward and do all different kinds of wacky things. But I'm feeling like as I'm doing it, I actually feel my core being engaged. I feel better for it. It makes me take some deeper breaths. And all of those actually help me feel better in my own sort of skin and own body. So when I go off to, you know, walk the dog or go to work, I'm like, yeah, I've woken everything up. I'm not going to slip on ice. I'm ready to go. 
it's so important to have that that morning routine really can set the pace for the whole day. Exactly. So we do have a question that's come up. Sarah Wilson, does deep breathing help your balance immediately or does it take take time and practice? Danielle, do you want to take that? It won't make it perfect immediately, but you will notice an immediate change. So if you were trying just that single leg balance and holding your breath, and then you try it and just focus on that deep breathing where you're feeling your belly move in and out, you will notice an immediate improvement. It could be just a few seconds, but you'll notice an immediate change. And you can test it out, Sarah. I would say like, even if you, if you're someone who does yoga or does practice some more sort of advanced balance poses, or even just a single leg stand, do it holding your breath and then take a break, then do it with breathing, like time yourself and then do it the next day and switch it up so you can test it out. Try prove us wrong. Um, or otherwise maybe you'll see that we are actually right. So or just keep trying to prove us wrong and all of a sudden your balance is going to be amazing. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so balance is obviously important and you want to find ways to incorporate that into everything you do, no matter what level that you're at. But obviously posture is something that comes with this as well. And you've mentioned that, you know, you, we see kids or some people like to walk on their toes and how that affects their posture. You were just pregnant, so that changes your posture. Some of us sit too long or stand too much. Tell us a little bit more about posture and your thoughts on it, because I hear so many people say, oh, you know, you've got, is, is it true? You know, sit up straight. You've got to have good posture. What's your opinions and your thoughts on posture? So you do want good posture. You don't necessarily need to sit up straight 24-7 everyone needs to move. Your body isn't designed to stay in one position really without moving more than 15 minutes. You have to keep going so that way nothing is getting too rigid. But you want to, if you're sitting, just sit proud. If you're sitting kind of slumped and sad, like that's more of a sad position, that's going to put a lot of strain on your back. You're going to have shoulder pains. You won't be able to take that full breath that we've been talking about. But if you sit up nice and tall and you're in that crowd position, that your chest is able to open, your ribs can expand, diaphragm can move. You're not straining the front or the back of, of your chest and your upper body. So no muscle is working at a disadvantage compared to the other side. It's nice and even. And even is what's going to give you that longevity in a position that your body's not necessarily designed to do as much as we ask it to do. Uh, I really like the sit proud. I haven't heard someone say, I always see them sit up straight, but I actually like the sit proud and don't be sad. I could put quote marks around that from Daniel's parents. Sit proud, don't be sad. I'm guessing that some of the people listening to here today, I believe your mother and your great aunt. I love great aunts. They are such key people in our lives. Kelly and Karen are listening today, or maybe they're listening later, and I'm sure they'll be proud to know that they have a daughter-in-law or a niece who likes to sit proud and um, makes them proud. So great tips there. Tell me a little bit about, you mentioned that every 15 minutes we should move. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about that and how do you manage to fit that into your day, especially if you do have a desk job or you're sitting at home taking care of a baby. It can be a challenge. And if you go for 20, it's not going to not going to ruin your day. <laughs> but you'll notice almost when your body kind of feels like, oh, it's getting a little fidgety. Oh, this is getting a little stiff. So if you're noticing that sensation, that's the time to move. Mm -hmm. Your body's not made to truly be still and rigid. It wants to move. So let it. Yeah. So even if that means just get up, oh, this is a good time to go to the bathroom. Oh, I need to refill my water bottle. Give yourself that little one to two minute task. Or if you can't look away from your computer because you've got so much going on, you have meeting after meeting, and we all know there's Zoom meetings. So you're, you're not even able to go to a different conference room. Then you can do some light stretches at your desk right in between those two Zoom calls that could take 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's so, I don't know how to get the message out to our public in a nice way, because I can sometimes be a little bit too blunt, obviously to help people understand that it's not normal to st say, stay still. 
that's not what our bodies are made to do. And when we sit for long periods of time, especially when we stand, we can't but help but fidget and move a little bit. But, um, you know, I actually saw a patient last night and I said to her, because she was talking about how much she would sit for. And I'm like, I want you to realize that smoking is to the lungs what sitting is to our back. I mean, we're not made to do it. It really hurts us. And it's not the actual, you know, you can sit, but it's the not moving for a length of time is really detrimental to us. I just had another call earlier. Someone was asking about, oh, mattresses and how mattresses, which mattresses cause back pain. And I'm like, it's more because we don't move enough during the day. Because when we move, our blood flows, our nervous system fires up. We keep all of our, our ability to manage pain and ailments. It keeps everything normal so that when you do sleep and when you do rest, you're going to feel fine. But we're a society that has become so sedentary and thinks that only when we exercise is because we're doing a virtual class or running on a treadmill or outside rather than, no, you've got to figure out ways to stand on one leg when you brush your teeth. If you're sitting for a length of time, get up and go fill up your water bottle. Like we have, movement is what we're made to do. All right, I just got onto my little rant and now I'll let you have yours. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to love my rant. But I tell people, I said, look, we came from hunter and gathering. How did we hunt? It's not because we had all of these tools that we have today, like we would go hunting. We outran our prey. Yeah. So we're made to move. Absolutely. And there's some, actually some great books out there that talk about, yes, if you've got a lion and a man or a woman and a short amount of distance, yeah, the cats oh are good. But... If we have to work on endurance and going for a long way, we will win because we're made to move for long periods of time. Yes. So if you bring it back, our bodies were designed to do this. Right. And all we're trying to do is encourage you all to move and in different ways. Yeah. And I do always ask like, well, how long can you sit for? What can you tolerate? Because, of course, we need to be able to tolerate our day to day. But if you're saying, well, I can't sit for eight straight hours. So, well, can you hold your arm over your head for eight straight hours? No, my arm would get tired. Well, that's why your back is tired. It's not made to do that. Not made to do that. Exactly. Exactly. All right, well, I think we've got some messages out there for people to, you know, basically just don't sit still. You need good balance. You need good core strength. Your posture is, you want it to be good, but it's a very dynamic and fluid thing. Uh, tell us what you're looking forward to, Danielle. As the days get longer and the pandemic starts to wind down, um, what are you looking forward to? A few things. One, more time outside. I love playing outside normally yeah. um, very rarely will you see me just sitting inside on especially on a sunny beautiful day cold and snowy it has been a little bit of a challenge with the baby I can't force her to be outside so much with me <laughs> but that will be really fun so more playing with my daughter more time outside and as the pandemic starts to get more under control I can't wait to see more of my family yeah it has been Quinn hasn't even met all of her aunts and uncles, so we can't wait for her to finish meeting people, yeah. which hopefully by her birthday, we can do something that's not just virtual. <laughs> yeah, the um, social side of the pandemic, without thinking of the movement and the, the health side, the social side definitely has had a significant impact on everyone. And I can't imagine what it's like having a baby that you haven't been able to introduce to family members. So that'll be super exciting. Yes. And hopefully she won't be too shy by the time we can do that where she doesn't want to see anyone. I'm sure she's anything like you. She'll be just fine. Just fine. Hey, um, you know, I'm always looking for books to read. Well, actually, I like to listen. Actually, I'm not a big reader. I'm a listener. Um, and I like to hear what people are listening to or reading. Any recommendations? So I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts. My current top favorite one is probably Moms and Murder. It, they, it's two moms um, that have left their corporate worlds um, or at least have downsides from it. 
and they talk about just different cases, either something that's been highlighted in the media, how it started, where it is right now, and then they get off on tangents, which I'm just such a fan of, <laughs> and they talk about how, like, oh, well, when I was listening to this or researching this case, I, my husband was getting ready for a total knee, and I was like, oh, yeah, well, I guess I'll drop him off at the hospital. And then I just went back to research because I couldn't even sit with him. And I picked him up later. And it was just like this funny little tangent. But it's a, a nice uh, nice change from just the day to day. Well, yeah, I think dealing with murder cases is quite a change from day. I'm pleased that's a change from your day to day. Because if you see it aligned with what you do, I'd be concerned. And what about a TV show or a movie? Recent movie was the um, The Little Things. It was on HBO Max. I believe it might have been in theaters too, but we don't go to the movies. So, but another, it was a detective movie. So it's wow. really fine with my true crime. Huh. I'm going to wrap you up in a box and it's going to have things. Uh, the descriptors are going to be has a baby, new mom, loves Pilates and bar, and murder and true crime. I mean, you're a colorful young lady, and it's. But I, I mean, surely that makes you a colorful physical therapist who can help a lot of people. At least I have a variety of interests. <laughs> Lots of things you can talk about. All right, let's bring on um, either Sarah or Nick is going to help our giveaway today. Remember, if you're listening and you want to go into the weekly drawing, because once you're in, you're in to win for the entire series. Um, we're giving away the Yeti lunchbox, which is a pretty cool, actually. Like anything Yeti, I think, is pretty cool. And um, also a PPT police line hat. Hello, Sarah. It's a, I like the color of that hat. All right, tell us who our win, today's winner is. Sarah does do a secret drawing on the side. We have a random picker. Um, who's today's winner? Our winner today is Mark Pizzullo. Mark Pizzullo, congratulations. So we'll be reaching out to you and um, wear that hat with pride and pack that little lunch box with lots of healthy things. And if you're looking for interesting things to put into it. Next week, I'm joined by Amy Sullivan. And Amy actually is going to be talking a lot about eating and nutrition, as well as the importance of sleep and walking. She also has a baby. So there's a lot of, be, a lot of walk talk Walking talk next week, but as well as sleeping, we'll definitely get into sleep and be giving away a Medi Pillow um, water pillow, which we love, as well as a PPT Nike full zip, full zip fleece. There's some great giveaways for next week. All right, Danielle, here you've got the last word. If you were going to provide some key advice, the same advice for every single person, patient that you saw, um, what key advice and what key message would you want to give them? Not too different from read last week, but find something you enjoy. The more yeah. you enjoy it, the more consistent you can be. So be consistent and then focus on your breathing. So that way you don't have to focus on your posture, but you'll be able to work on it. I love it. Danielle, thank you so much. Everyone out there, breathe. That may be the tip that we actually add on today's list of things. Do you make sure that you breathe out? Do you consciously ensure that you breathe while you're exercising and moving? So I think it's something that people have to think about and take note of and make sure if they're holding their breath, then look at ways, start singing, start humming. All right, Danielle, thank you so much. We will be back next Thursday. Um, if you're a first-time listener, please feel free to sign up. The link is below, performanceptri.com dash live. We also have some special episodes um, coming out on Saturday mornings. I actually have Randy Barenbaum. We're recording later today. Well, she's going to, but we're going to post that on Saturday morning. She will be here to talk a lot about nutrition. She is a specialist in that field. And um, But every Thursday, I'm joined by one of our colleagues to help you on your journey back to be the best that you can on the sunniest day of the year where we're yet to plan what we'll do, but there will be some big event on the summer solstice. Thank you, everyone. Stay strong. Keep moving. Thank you.